<clears throat> Alright guys, it's your boy Ryan Thomas here and a bit of a change in set and layout and dynamic and stuff but this is my review of the Huawei Ascend G7 and especially only one in 2016. Now I'm just going to preface this video by saying that I have not owned one so owning one is not from my perspective but from my friend Aiden's perspective. He's given me some b-roll and he's given me some notes on the device and I've also got the specs on here as well so I can look over the phone and tell you kind of what it's like owning one, what the specs, maybe a comparison, the price, stuff like that. Okay, so for one of these you're looking at about £150 on eBay, which roughly gets you an iPhone 5S, it also gets you an LG G3, and if you save up a little bit more you can actually get an LG G4, so it's kind of pretty low end, but it also compares to some of the older, higher end phones. Okay, so to go into the display, you know the one thing you're going to be staring at, the display, you're getting a 5.5 inch screen, which is actually a good size for a phone of this price range, you know, you're getting a nice fairly big screen. I'd call it average, but you know, for a budget phone, it's actually kind of big. The downside is it's 720p, which at that size is just not a high enough PPI to be considered, you know, good and usable. I would say, you know, it is a, it's a decent quality picture, don't get me wrong, but you know, compared to your high-end phones of around this price, you're not going to be getting the same kind of screen quality as something like an LG G3. It is IPS which makes up for it, which means that it can reproduce colours quite well and the colours and overall viewing angle should be better than something that is, you know, standard LCD or even OLED. But you're not getting those deep blacks like you would in OLED and nowhere near that screen efficiency, you know, with the off blacks like on OLED either. So although the screen is okay, I wouldn't call it high end and I wouldn't call it a standout feature of this phone. Now, according to GSM Marina, which is where I get all my phone specs so that there isn't an individual outlier, it should all come from the same source. I always get my specs on gsmarina.com. And it's showing just a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. It said it's quad core, and I believe it's a fairly decent chip, but you're definitely not gonna be getting high end performance out of this. As you can see in some of the B-roll, you're getting some fairly stuttery and jaggedy kind of loading screens, and especially when you're using the home screen and animations and stuff around the OS, it isn't the smoothest experience ever, and that again is why I would kind of steer clear of this phone. But if you really want something new, then I guess it's something to go for. But no, it, it's good. You can play games on it. You can watch films on it. But it's just not going to be the smoothest experience you're going to get for that kind of price. Pairing it with 2GB of RAM and 16GB of onboard storage is fairly good. You know, this is average of a low-end Android smartphone. You know, with the standard flagships going from 4 to 8GB nowadays, you kind of want, you know, 2GB of RAM isn't too much, but it's definitely not the worst you'll see in a smartphone of this price range. Now, on GSM Marina, it's showing that it can go up to 32GB via microSD. And yes, I know there's a microSD card slot, but up to 32 gigs, really? That, that doesn't sound like an awful lot for expandable storage. But there you go, so you can actually make it 48 gigabytes of storage. Obviously, you have to store your applications on the inbuilt storage, the 16 gigabytes, but you can store photos, movies, you know, music, anything else on that micro SD expansion. The camera is actually fairly good. You're getting a 13 megapixel sensor with f2.0 glass, and you're getting fairly decent image quality out of this. I wouldn't call it the best, but again, they haven't really skimped too hard on the camera. It does come out pretty well. Now, despite its fairly high megapixel count, you can only go up to 1080p video, which is really kind of uh, frustrating. Phone manufacturers like Huawei don't tend to push their cameras to the limits in terms of video. The 6P has a similar pixel count to some of their Mate series devices, yet their Mate series devices can only do 1080p video, where the 6P can actually do 4K video. It's really odd, and I'm not sure why Huawei do this, but they do it anyway. The selfie cam is a 5 megapixel camera and it's fairly good, I mean it's not the best, but again 5 megapixels that's competing with the likes of the iPhone 6 and 6s Plus, stuff like that, you know, you're getting a fairly high end f selfie camera, it's just not going to be the best, it's, it's good. That's what I'd say about these cameras, is they're not the best. Uh, but they're not the worst. They're definitely good and definitely competitive within the price range. For battery life, you're getting a 3000 mAh battery, which is non-removable, unfortunately. But it, it does last a long time because you're getting that uh, slightly bigger screen, but definitely nowhere near as pixel-dense screen. You're getting all that longer-lasting battery life because it hasn't got to power such a high-end screen. Now, this would be even more efficient if it was OLED, but Huawei's decided to go with an IPS display here. Now, I could go into a more in-depth kind of overall review, but I'm going to say the build is OLED. Okay. It doesn't feel the best. It's definitely light, lighter than you expect, and it doesn't feel chunky like a hefty kind of, almost, I don't want to say brick, I want to say kind of something substantial and well built in your hand. But it is metal and it is plastic and it is glass, so 
you're not getting the worst kind of plasticky feel to it, but it's definitely you can you can feel it there. Performance is good in games, performance is basically good overall. It's not very smooth. Would I buy this phone if I had that kind of budget? No. I would buy the G3 and a battery cover because you can buy a G3 for about £120. That gives you £30 to spend on battery accessories because of course the battery life isn't the best on the LG G3. You could also buy a 1M8, you could also buy an iPhone 5S if you're partial to iOS. And this kind of gives me more ammo in my gun of firing to say that you should buy older but higher end phones instead of newer but cheaper phones. This is running 4.4 KitKat with a planned upgrade to 6.0, but we haven't seen that yet and it's already 7.0 time here, so not really sure when that's gonna come out, if it's gonna come out. I love Huawei, I love the brand, but I just don't feel like these budget smartphones are any good. I think you should step back, buy a used unit, and even if it is a little scratched or dinged up, you can buy one in really good condition, or you could you know, save yourself a lot of money and go with something that's a little bit dinged up, and you're gonna be getting a, a much better phone, a much better experience for around the same price, if not cheaper. The G3, which costs a little bit less than this, you're getting a quad HD screen, you're getting more RAM, better performance, removable battery, much better cameras, and overall the experience is much better. Like I said, it's difficult to recommend a phone with bad battery life, but I mean, if you've got that extra dosh compared to a Huawei G7, you can actually go and buy those battery banks or battery cases or whatever you want. So unfortunately, I won't recommend this, but if you want it, if it's something you've been looking at and you think, oh, this is a great phone, I don't think you'll be disappointed but if you've got that kind of money and you're looking you know to be tactical and to save money i would definitely go with an older and much higher end device like the g3 or the one i made so thanks for watching guys this has been your boy ryan thomas i hope you like the new kind of look to the videos or whatever i'm just kind of switching it up a little bit and i will see you next week have a great one cheers peace